Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Check out the link below, fool.com forward slash the smattering, to get access to the 10 best stocks to buy right now. The streaming platform Roku reported earnings in late July, and the stock absolutely surged. It's up about 30% since then. But more recently, it's come down, and it's given back about 10% of those gains. If you're watching this video, probably trying to figure out, is Roku a stock you should buy? Is Roku it's time to sell? Where do things stand? I'm Jason Hall. This is The Smattering, and I've got somebody here with me who claims to know a lot about Roku. That's the voice of the people, my friend Jeff Santoro. How's it going, Jeff? It's going well. I don't know how much I know. I can tell you what I noticed about this quarter, though, because I know you and I disagree about this company a little bit. We disagree a pretty substantial amount. Let's just get it out there right now. I'm, I'm pretty bearish on Roku. I'll talk about why closer to the end of the video. You're generally more bullish, but you follow the company every quarter. You look at its earnings, you keep some data and follow it. And tell me if I'm wrong, but I think you've arrived at, there's a couple of things you see that are kind of good buy signals. And one thing that maybe is maybe a little more on the sell side. Yeah. So tell me where we are and what, and what do you think? So let's talk about the top line numbers, the ones you hear about in the headlines. So we've seen revenue growth slow drastically since 2021. Uh, during the pandemic, they were seeing 50, 60% revenue growth. It dropped all the way down to 1% in the quarter, in Q1 of this year. And then in Q2, that was just reported last week, jumped back up to 11% year over year growth. So that's a positive sign. The company was not uh, consistently profitable prior to the pandemic, but it wasn't posting huge net losses back then. That changed drastically after the, the crash that kind of came uh, through 2022. Pretty big net losses the last couple quarters. But since the end of 2022, that has started to improve too. The net loss has gotten smaller and smaller. Um, they were cash flow positive again this past quarter after not having been for several quarters before that. So some of the headline numbers were looking good. But when it comes to Roku, I look at the three uh, KPIs that they report that they point to as indicators of how the company is doing. And that's active accounts, streaming hours, and average revenue per user. And Two out of those three are looking pretty good. So active accounts was up 17%. That's right where it's been consistently for the last bunch of quarters. Mid to high teens, like clockwork, every quarter, they're growing their active accounts. That's good. I like to see that continue. Streaming hours, also consistently high teens to mid to low 20s. And that was up 21% in this last quarter. So again, very good to see. Now, average revenue per user. After growing very strongly during the pandemic and a little bit after that, that has not had a, a good run the last couple quarters. So ARPU was down 7% year over year in Q2. That follows a quarter where it was down 5% in Q1. So that has leveled off and started the trail off the last couple quarters. That's not good, but we've seen from other companies, there's a little bit of a softer advertising market out there. So it does make a little bit of sense. But to me, if they're growing their active users, if there's, those active users are watching more content and the advertising market rebounds a little bit, I think you're going to see those ARPU numbers start to come back. So that's, that's what I'm seeing with the numbers. And that's why I'm, I wouldn't say I'm super bullish on the company, but I'm definitely not selling. Yeah. So just, again, I think you're right. There's, it's, it's a positive that we've seen because let's be honest, Roku wasn't the only, you know, again, it's the platform, right? And then there's all the streaming companies on top of it. And it's, it's been a dogfight, right? To try for everybody's trying to get market share. And I think we'll see more consolidation there. And the question that I have, and this is the reason that I'm the most bearish, Jeff, is because I, I'm not convinced that Roku really has a very strong moat, right? In terms of it's, it being a platform that consumers, it's like, it doesn't have the brand power of like a Coca-Cola, for example, um, where it's, it's like, it's not the verb. People don't Roku shows, they Netflix and chill, right? It's, it doesn't, it's, and, and I'm not sure that that's going to be a durable competitive advantage that its platform, people, very few people go buy a TV and they say, well, I only want one that has Roku built in it. So that's, I think that's going to be a challenge, particularly in the world of the Apples and the Amazons, where they have so many other things on their platform and ecosystem that having an Apple TV streaming device or the, the Amazon Fire Stick is just kind of the entree to all of the other things that are inside their ecosystem. And it just, I, I'm concerned that Roku is going to have any real durable advantage against those competitors for people's eyeballs, that it's going to prove out. And then even with the improvements that we've seen in the business, they continue to, to give a massive amount of equity to insiders. Stock-based compensation over the past four quarters, like $400 million for a business that's still burning free cash flow 
operating cash flow positive but free cash flow negative, that's a real concern for me. Um, I understand it. That's part of the tech world. You, you do that, but it's just such a way on shareholders for a business that's only modestly improving. I, I, I don't know if I'd say it's a sell, but I, I certainly I, I can't get behind buying the business until we see economics really get better. And then, then I might be one that I want to think about.